in Russia, Ukraine, a lot of people have been talking that Russia would use its cyber prowess. Oh, yeah. To war. But no, to just war. tanks. <laughs> right? So, some military folks have actually told this to me that actually don't try and draw very macro <clears throat> conclusions from this. It's yeah. actually the element of surprise as a yeah. military tactical move. You're expecting a certain kind of war. The other person just gives you a totally different war. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not yeah. expecting yeah. tactics in Ukraine. Yeah, Japan. yeah. That's what Russia gives you in, you know, so that case of Saddam. Saddam is expecting tanks. The U.S. doesn't give him tanks. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's then layer in the other part of this, which is it's not just about military tactics. That part of the argument, part of what feels so geopolitically, or not geo, just just feels so significant, possibly world historically significant about the Ukraine invasion, is that it seems to come on top of uh, a re-territorialization of politics, right? You know, there was a kind of dream in the 90s and the 2000s that, you know, basically the world was flat. We were creating all these kinds of trade packs. International trade was was humming. And it just seemed like the world was kind of a united space in yeah. that way. And in fact, it would be insane to go to war because you'd you know, lock yourself out of this humming trade network. And and, so, and there was no point in going to war either because if you wanted resources, you would just trade for them. You didn't have to invade for them um, because, you know, the whole world was one market. So if you wanted things, you you just join the market. Uh, and that, that was a really kind of optimistic moment for people who were counting on peace. Because, yeah, it's not that there wasn't any violence, but it just, you, you could tell yourself that all the violence was sort of part of a grand mopping up operation. It was just little you know, blips and wrinkles and it, the, but the real story was we were entering a kind of liberal world order uh, and, and we're finally achieving a liberal world order. And, you know, everything that Putin has done has just seemed to, to push in the opposite direction, right? You know, uh, sort of dis detaching Russia from sort of the, the global liberal trade network, insisting that, you know, or building up the uh, Russian food production to the point of self-sufficiency, invading Ukraine, which will absolutely help with that, being able to deny other people's food supplies. So the point is now they have to play along with Russia. I mean, it's it's it, it feels like it's it's not just the military tactics of, the, of World War II. It also feels like the economic politics of the 1930s leading up to World War II. Uh, was sort of the carving up of the world into economic blocks. Um, yeah. You know, I, that's not a world I really want to live in. So, right. um, but, but I, you know, I, I, we have to, you know, our analysis of how things work and how they're going and our hopes for how they might work and what we would like, they, those have to be different, right? So it's possible to, to test this, but also to just believe that, like, we are, we are entering a geopolitical phase again um but i think no, that's I right where yeah. geopolitics as many people are now saying right geopolitics after a while uh they started to overtake economics as the yeah. primary driver of decisions right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. And you look at the tech wars between the us and china and you look at that you look at how rare earth materials going back to the telegraph cable <clears throat> analogy by the way which you've drawn <clears throat> and i've also drawn my book there's raw materials now required even for the technological dimension of competition that ultimately leads to more territorial, uh, territorialization, right? So yeah. it's almost like you cannot completely disconnect um, the two, right? Um, yeah. yeah. That's why ultimately my conclusion was that actually it's not an either or question. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and geography remains important because even if tomorrow my wars are going to be over artificial intelligence, I need chips. For chips, I need, you know, certain yeah. rare earth materials. Those rare earth materials are coming from territory. And so whichever countries end up owning those or sitting on those reserves become as important as the countries that were sitting on oil uh, over the last few decades. Yeah, I think the hope is that if if the we really do have, a, you know, a world market, then then even stuff that, you know, people really need that's strategically important, you know, you can source through the market. That's at least the hope, because that's what prevents countries from invading each other is the is the, the security that they can get what they need through through market purchasing. Right. And they don't have like they don't have to invade to get it. Um, but you're right. The rare earth materials make that hard. And, and oil has always been tricky in this regard. Right. Even at a time when like people were no longer going to war for rubber, when they were no longer going to war for like any list of 
you know, colonial commodities that were grown in the tropics and that, you know, rich countries needed. Like those used to be the constant source of wars. And even after a lot of that damn town, oil seemed to be the one thing that would lead people to war. That's right, that's right.